I will be slowly turning this into a scrambler. So expect content on that build. Hey everybody, I'm finally back as promised with a build update on my Royal Enfield Interceptor. In my video about why I sold my Himalayan, I told everybody that I would be converting this into a scrambler. And I think this will be one of the simplest, maybe most accessible Interceptor scrambler builds you will find on YouTube. I didn't go to any custom shops. All of these are just my and my friend Martin's ideas. In fact, the story goes that Martin is the one that convinced me to go for an Interceptor Scrambler instead of an adventure bike. And he was absolutely right. So far, it's been everything that he's promised and more. So when it comes to scrambler builds that you find on the internet, especially for the Interceptor, a lot of them I think are really focused on aesthetics. You know, there's so much fabrication, so much specialized work and parts from custom shops that get really expensive. And while that's nice, I'm a fan of so many of these builds. Number one, I don't have the budget for that. And number two, for me, the main thing will really be how it rides. Is it a pleasure to ride? Is it capable off-road and I'm happy with what I have so far. So the previous owner made a lot of mods to this already. I think mainly cosmetic and I've kept some of those, built on them and corrected a number of them. So let's start with the things that the previous owner did to the bike. Let's start with the mainly cosmetic. The previous owner installed these black Diablo engine covers, which I think set the tone for the bike's slightly dechromed aesthetic. Most of it is still chrome, but I love how these look. Be warned though that water does pool underneath these and this will compromise the chrome engine covers. This is just something you need to live with. Also, I had a spacer installed to pop out my rear brake slightly as the protrusions on the cover interfered with my foot's reach to the lever. Moving to the front, we have this black windscreen, which I call cosmetic because it doesn't really do much to block the wind. Then we have these Diablo bullet turn signals. The rear used to be Diablo signals as well, but they conked out, so I replaced them with these cheap matte black turn signals from Shopee, which I actually like the look of better. It also had a small round brake light that was too dim, so I replaced it with another cheap Shopee round tail light. I do like the minimal look of it compared to the stock. Then it has these custom fabricated fender risers. They don't really do much, but I like the look and it gives my chunkier tires some more clearance. Just remember to put some Loctite on these as I lost a couple and getting them fabricated again was actually expensive. Now onto the more functional mods. It has these Diablo adjustable levers, which I quite like. It also has this bicolor LED headlamp, which you can change color by turning the bike on and off. Originally, this came with a custom black handlebar on risers, but I returned the stock handlebar and reinstalled the risers. The custom bar was too tall for the cables, causing weird problems with the clutch. It also lacked rigidity without a crossbar. I like the setup now with the stock handlebar and the risers, as it's a more commanding position and helps when I'm standing. Definitely a must for a scrambler. It's also got a DNA air filter, which I guess helps with performance, but I can't compare since I've had it from the start. It also luckily came with a full set of protection with a bash plate, engine guards, and a radiator guard. These are essential for going off-road. It even has the Royal Enfield fork gaiters. By far the most valuable upgrade the previous owner installed are these tech lowering shocks. These lower the bike by about an inch, I think, and they're more adjustable and perform better than the stock shocks. You can adjust the preload and the damping. They're also lighter than the original shocks. This is where we start talking about how I refined the bike. The bike came to me extremely low with the lowering shocks and the forks dropped significantly along with a shaved seat. This resulted in a weird jittery ride and kind of a feeling of a being on a pseudo cruiser. To solve this, while still enjoying the adjustability and performance of the lowering shocks, I've installed the fork extender that comes inside the box of the lowering shocks, significantly raising the height of the bike past stock. So I suspect many people who install aftermarket shocks neither tune them properly nor take into account how a change in seat height changes the bike's geometry. So I've gotten a bit of work done to tune the suspension and correct the bike's geometry. First I got an expert mechanic to tune the rear shock and he added a significant amount of preload. It was previously set to the minimum amount resulting in a weird bouncy ride that I didn't know was actually pretty bad. The effect was night and day in terms of ride smoothness. It glides on the road now and you can actually also really feel this as a pillion. However, he still tells me that the spring is for a heavier rider and I would benefit from a lighter spring. 
Next, to compensate for the change in height caused by the fork extender and my bigger rear tire, more on that later, I've raised the forks as well. Along with that, I had Martin change my fork oil to a thicker 20 weight oil. And the difference was also significant. My fork used to pogo when I squeezed the front brake, which I didn't even know was, was really messed up. Now it's moderately firm and rides so much better with better responsiveness and much more confidence in the twisties. It no longer bounces in the middle of a curve when I press the front brake. All of which add up to an interceptor that now rides, I think, like a dream. It handles easily, yet it has the right amount of stability. And most notably, I got a significant increase in seat height. I suspect that my interceptor must be a candidate for the tallest interceptor in the world. For reference, I'm 5'7", 169 cm, and I am tiptoeing quite a bit now, whereas on a stock interceptor, I'm practically flat foot. I didn't measure the new seat height, but I measured the new ground clearance, and from the stock clearance of 174 mm, it's increased to somewhere between 190 and 200 millimeters. That's the same as the tall KTM 390 Adventure. So that's pretty awesome in terms of building an off-road capable interceptor. To help with the increased seat height, I've kept the custom touring seat the previous owner installed, which is shaved in the middle. However, I'm on the fence about this because the shaved seat decreases the distance between my knees and the pegs a bit too much, so my knees need to angle out a little bit to fit, which I find uncomfortable and just not right. The next and probably most important change I've made to the bike in terms of off-road capability is changing the stock tires to Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs, one of the best reviewed and best looking dual purpose tires popularly used on big bike scrambler conversions. I've gone with a 110 80 18 up front, up from 190 18 stock, and I've changed to a 140 80 17 rear from a 130 70 18 stock. Even with a smaller diameter, the wider, thicker rear tire has actually increased the height of the rear, and so that's why it needed to be balanced with raising the forks. Of course, I needed to have a new 17-inch rim made for the rear tire. This is a Performance Parts Corporation 4.25-17-36 spoke rim. The rim and the spokes are new and assembled from scratch, and I had a guy named Jun Ferrer do it who specializes in supermoto conversions. So I love how the look of the bike transformed with the Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs. It's a bonus to have such a well-performing tire also really be aesthetic. With the new rubber, the bike actually handles even better than with the stock Pirelli Phantom Sports Comps which had 10,000 kilometers on them. It's more agile now which is amazing and now I also have real off-road capability on top of it. So the main trade-offs would be the short longevity of this tire, which can last as little as 6,000 kilometers with an aggressive rider, and a noticeably less smooth ride at top speeds on the highway. The next most significant upgrade are these slip-on pipes from IXG. That's Indian Expert Garage, an Indian mechanic and rider based near Manila. He's a great guy, he also rents out Royal Enfields, and he sells a lot of great affordable accessories for Royal Enfield bikes. He's a whiz on working on the bikes as well. These pipes are half the weight of the stock pipes and sound a hell of a lot better. You get a decent growl that lets the engine sing and gives you tons more road presence without being obnoxious. pipes and the aftermarket shocks, I've conservatively shaved around 6 kilos off the stock interceptor. I got the pair for less than 12,000 pesos, which is less than $230. The next upgrade from IXG are these luggage racks and saddlebags. I got the entire set for less than 10,000 pesos or less than 190 US dollars, which is a steal. They sit just above the pipes, never really touching them, even with some load. They're water resistant and can be waterproofed with cheap rain covers. Note that these get in the way of the passenger foot pegs, which brings me to my next mod from IXG, these passenger foot peg relocators. These are a must for using the saddlebags and for the comfort of a taller pillion, like my girlfriend Bibimoto who is 5'9 or 175 cm. The trade-off though is that it causes your heels to come quite close to the pipes. So these can and have melted our boot soles. 
Next, I have this side stand expander that I ordered from ADV Tribe in India for $50 all in with shipping. These are another big help when I go off-road, particularly for my really tall interceptor which leans over quite a bit. Finally, my latest mod are these Double Take Scrambler mirrors. Double Take are known for their indestructible ADV mirrors, popularized by Itchy Boots among others. And these Scrambler mirrors offer that durability and versatility to be folded while maintaining that Scrambler aesthetic. As far as I know, I'm the only Interceptor owner I've ever encountered that uses them. They do look a little homely compared to the stock or bar and mirrors with these RAM arms and the aluminum adapters, so I'll look into somehow improving that look in the future while keeping this mirror. And I think that's about it. Please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments or let me know any input you might have. So hopefully that provides some good reference or inspiration for you guys who want to make your interceptors more off-road ready. Now, of course, I think many of you will relate that once you get started on this, well, a build is never really done. So there are a few things that I would still like to try or change in the future. And there are two big ones. First of all, again, this lowering shock with the extender really isn't ideal. It's just got three inches of travel, makes the geometry kind of weird. So I definitely at some point want to upgrade to the YSS rear shock, maybe the G series. Now the other thing is this stock handlebar. First of all, I really want a black handlebar to match the blacked out aesthetic of the other parts of the bike with the engine covers. And then I'm really hemming and hawing because I do want to get a wider, taller, more off-road enduro handlebar like I see other people using or even maybe the Royal Enfield Adventure handlebar. But right now, I'm happy with how this is set up and then I'm gonna have to adjust everything again. So that's something I'll have to look into in the future, especially because a lot of the off-road handlebars will necessitate me having to change the cables. That's an additional expense, which is an additional delay as well because I'm not sure I'll be able to find them locally. So I'm holding off on that. But once I get a new handlebar, I will definitely be installing handguards Aesthetically, actually, I'm not into the look of having the handguards, but again, you know, as I get into more and more off-road with the Interceptor, I just want that peace of mind that I won't be wrecking my levers if I drop the bike. So those would be the major functional mods that I still want to make. But actually, cosmetically, aesthetically, there's actually going to be a big change coming, but I'm gonna keep that as a surprise for an upcoming video because one of my clients wants to sponsor the change to the bike, and I'm super excited about that. Stay tuned for that because this Interceptor Scrambler is about to become a lot more unique. So going back to what I said at the start of the video, the question is, can it scramble? Can it go off-road? Is it gonna perform with all of these mods? Fortunately, I already have the answer to that. Stay tuned for an upcoming adventure vlog. I'm super excited about that. It's gonna go up in a couple of days and you'll see just how well or not my simple interceptor scrambler can handle some gnarly off-road. So if you're interested in that, please do like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video. Hit the bell for notifications and I'm excited to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.